Yeah, I would I would say we are in the higher eight digits per annum uh, worldwide uh, revenue, uh, very close to nine digits. So we are there, and we've grown about we grew about three hundred and seventy percent in the U.S. last year. Hey guys, Nathan Chen here. See on publisher of founder magazine welcome to another interview this is like one of the covid lockdown series it's here melbourne 17th of april 2020 and we're just trying to put out as much content as we can to help serve you and just interview incredible super super smart startup founders and really find out what's working what's not and what they are doing to respond to this with their business so today we're humbled and blessed by Ash Soki. And uh, he's the founder of a company called Wow Skin Science. And uh, look, I was introduced to Ash by a mutual friend of ours, uh, Greta Van Reel. And she said, like, this guy is an absolute beast when it comes to e-commerce. So I'm excited to speak with him, hear his journey and get him to share just anything that that's working right now and his experiences during this time. So Ash, thank you so much for taking the time, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for giving us, uh, giving me the opportunity. Uh, obviously, the Founder Network has been uh, recommended and suggested a lot across my, you know, you know, common friends and so on. Obviously, Greta is a good friend of mine too. So uh, when we initially talked and you wanted to do this interview. I was really humbled and thank you for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time because I know you must have a lot on your plate. So, no, I mean, everything's a blur. So we don't know what day we are at other than looking at our calendars. So uh, it's actually a nice change to be, you know, outside the pattern and do something new. How oh, awesome. <laughs> well, the first question I ask everyone that comes on is, uh, how did you get your job? Like, how'd you find yourself doing the work you're doing today? Uh, going back, I think, I've been in the affiliate marketing industry for about 15 years now, since high school. And eventually we, I graduated into the health and beauty space in the US around 2009. And then when I moved to the States and we were, we were involved in the affiliate marketing industry. We did a lot of affiliate sales and eventually realized if you want to build something and take your ideas forward long term and build a legacy brand, you have to do everything on your own. Obviously, we had the marketing angle on all right, but we always saw things go downhill because we were dependent on sending our traffic or building blogs where traffic was sent to brands owned by someone else. We couldn't control the narrative, right? So eventually, I think it was 2012, uh, e-commerce in India was taking off. So I uh, founded Wow, co-founded Wow with uh, two of my high school friends and my older sibling. So, so the story of Wow is basically me and uh, it's a pair of two brothers, right? Me and my older brother and two of my high school friends who are brothers too. So, you know, uh, that's how WOW was formed. And uh, we initially started off with supplements in India uh, and it took off, you know, became number one, uh, one of the highest selling brands on Amazon India. And then eventually we were, you know, looking at the growth in, on Amazon in India, we figured out, hey, why don't we also do skincare and eventually hair care and, uh, that's how we've grown over the years. Uh, we've been the one of the top selling brands on Amazon India and the US for the last four years. We have the number one selling shampoo on Amazon India and in the US for the last four years. Um, but as a company and as one of the most important ethos of our company is customer centric and being product driven, you know, as marketers, it's easy to, you know, lose yourself with bad habits of just focusing on the marketing and not focusing on the products. When we started, uh, what we do with products is we're not just a private label brand, right? Well, when we initially started, we decided 
we're not just going to be another brand which just you know goes to a manufacturer and says i want this product made oh you have the formulation just put a label on your bottles now at wow we do everything from scratch everything is proprietary right from the formulation of our products the bottles we use the pumps that we use we own the molds for our bottles we own the molds for our pumps the packaging is unique we do everything from scratch and i think that adds tremendous value in the market where there are so many copycats right like especially in the health and beauty space it's so easy for anyone to go to a manufacturer and say i want to do the skin care product oh you have the formulation okay i'll just take the bottles you have as a manufacturer just put my i'll send you labels and the design and now i think we separate ourselves that way and that's actually paid off long term yes it's a lot of uh, pain in the initial months you can't launch products quickly but once you get the process through and you have a big team you know at different stages of product development uh, you figure it out you know and it also gives you great feedback where you're able to take feedback that your customers give which is actual feedback right forget the feedback that you get from your own team members who say oh this the fragrance on the skincare product is great but you never know until it gets to the real market and the real world and you get actual customer feedback which is really random and you take that feedback and you improve your product over time right iteration 1 2 3 and then eventually you get to a stage where you have the perfect product which is going into the real world and at getting more feedback It, it, the feedback can be anything right the font on the label is too small the people can't use instruction the face scrub the ingredients might be in such a way that the particles are too thick on the face scrub or the pump is not working in certain conditions you know all these feedback since we own part of a manufacturing factory back in india too it gives us great flexibility to do uh quick rapid changes on a product line and you know continuously improve um uh, so right now um uh, my other partners manage all of our india business and even though we stra- build strategy together and i manage all the global play which is us canada and so on and india which is our most significant business right now is managed by my indian uh, my co-founders who live and operate business out of india but we are a company which is headquartered out of india uh, bangalore india so that's how we have structured our company right now interesting so would you be able to share whatever whatever you feel comfortable with um just so people can get a, an idea of scale on what you're like and and size on what you're playing with whether it's dollars units how how often a, a product is sold like because we we're, we're not we're not talking like this is a decent sized business yeah i would i would say we are in the higher eight digits per annum uh worldwide uh, revenue uh very close to nine digits so we're there and we've grown about we grew about 370% in the us last year which is which is crazy right and we grew about at the size we and if you really, really look as a brand we've rapidly scaled about in the last 3 and a half years right but in india we've grown about uh, 170% last year our india business is really large uh, for a market like india which is price conscious quality conscious value conscious uh, we made some great inroads we have won several awards both in india and in the us so yeah we actually won the bootstrap startup of the year award uh, this last year in india so uh, so far so good we've been blessed with great partners and great uh, uh, team members that we work with both in india and the us and we also have a small satellite office in canada so uh, we are doing uh, i would say incredible things in a highly competitive category of health and beauty and we continue to believe the world will continue to evolve and smaller brands like us compared to the huge multinational brands will grow more quickly in terms of annual growth 
compared to, you know, big brands are growing probably four or five percent per annum. You know, we will continue to at least for the next five, six years, double digit growth. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell me, like, what's working right now? Like when when this hit about four to six weeks ago, were you guys affected at all? Um, did you see sales dip? Like, like what happened? Um, uh, we are uh, a story, I would say, two sides of coin, right? Obviously, in India, we had the complete lockdown curfew for about three weeks now. And I think the Indian government took the drastic step off, of course, for the safety of the country, of shutting down everything, right? They had Amazon shut, all warehousing shut, most of the logistics shut, uh, shut unless it was really, really critical, like food and so on, right? Even then, a lot of it was shut. So now I think uh, starting April 20th, which is uh, the following Monday, they are going to allow e-commerce to open up, so which is great. But otherwise, for the last two and a half, three weeks, we are completely shut in India. Uh, but in the U.S., fortunately, uh, you know, e-commerce was considered essential category, and we are in the essential category, like shampoos, body washes. So we've been... Uh, Holding steady, and I've actually seen uh, a slight increase in sales. I think people are more comfortable instead of going. And since we dominate so many categories on Amazon, and we are in a popular category like shampoo and conditioners and body washes and face washes, uh, we've actually done well. And uh, fortunately, touch wood, our warehouses uh, across the U.S. have stayed open. That is not just the Amazon warehouses, but our own private 3PL warehouses in the East Coast and West Coast. Uh, shout out to Cargo Co. That's the warehouse uh, 3PL provider we use. So they've been able to service our needs uh, during these tough times. And, you know, uh, we have stayed up and we've been able to service our customers. I think what's worked for us is just being honest with our old customers too. We have been honest and told them, you know, we are a small business and uh, uh, we've sent emails, uh, SMS communications with them saying, you know, hey, uh, we operate safely with, you know, uh, our warehouses are COVID-19 friendly or, you know, safe, you know, we follow the rules and it'll help a small businesses like us during these tough times if you if customers, loyal customers like you can support us, we sent out a video message through an email and that generated a lot of buzz and, you know, and your loyal customers will support you. Of course, we gave them a discount. We said, you know, as we have been able to stay open so far, so we request you to, you know, save using the discount code and order up and build up your inventory instead of trying to go out, your products will be delivered safely home, you know, things like that. And that's generated a lot of sales, both on social media and on our email channel and Facebook ads. Uh, but, you know, also I think a lot of what's worked, I think is there's a lot more available ad inventory out there right now, right? Like people are at home and spending a lot of time online. So what's happening is, uh, I think we've seen uh, an increase in performance on, you know, direct response ads, but CPMs and CPCs have dropped at least by 25% because just there is so much more inventory. And I think some of the bigger uh, D2C players or bigger mainstream brands like the luxury products and airlines and hotels have dropped off. And so there's a lot of available inventory on that auction, be it Facebook, Google, or Snapchat, that's working. Uh, and I think also what's working is uh, giveaways. When I say giveaways, you know, we have taken the angle of stay at home, shop, and you know, you have, we are doing giveaways of iPhones and uh, since we're in the women-based industry, we're giving iPhone 11s and, you know, uh, jewelry and you know, handbags as, like, part of the purchase. You get a chance to win in a giveaway, which is which will be announced at the end of the month. The more you buy, the more chances 
you have to win, you know, things like that have obviously helped us, you know, differentiate our brand um, a little bit from everything else that being prom- that's being promoted, right? You know, every morning, me and you wake up with 15 COVID-19 emails by the CEO of founders <laughs> of companies. So I think it was, uh, we got this idea from a common fr- friend, Juan, uh, I'm not sure if you, he's on the founder network, but you know, he uh, is CMO for a uh, men's uh, diesel truck industry, uh, diesel trucks and accessories that's being sold online. And they do large giveaway. They give out a truck per month and uh, we, you know, we had a conversation with him and he was able to give us that idea. And so we are implementing that. So that's been great. And also, I think one of the other approaches we took is uh, a lot of the user user generated content style of ads are working a lot more now. Um, when I say UGC, be it influencers or even our team members or employees within our team are able to make these small uh, raw videos, which is full of emotions, which are able to tell their COVID-19 strategies, right? In the health and beauty niche, like for us, we've been able to say, hey, since you are at home, uh, strategies, stay at home and have s- salon style spa treatments at home, be it skincare, uh, you know, it, day to day, you can, you probably couldn't push these angles through in terms of marketing, where now you can say, stay at home, skin spa, three steps, 15 minutes of, a, you know, face mask, 15 minutes of a different thing, screen cream, treatments, and angles of which are promoted with user generated content is working really well right now. And I think people are able to resonate with that because they have so much time on their hands and they can sit while working, you know, apply a face mask or a hair mask for 15 minutes and they actually have the time to do that, you know. So those are things that are absolutely working. Uh, One of the other things we find interesting is you know how there was a limit on how many emails a brand could send per week and how much performance you could get. You could probably double the amount of sends per week on emails and still see actually an increased performance, right? Because people are on their phone or on their laptop all day. They're in their mailbox a lot more. So uh, you won't have any unsubscribes. We aren't seeing any large unsubscribes on our Obviously, we don't send emails to our entire list, right? We send it to our engaged audience, but we're seeing a lot more performance on emails now. Uh, Same with SMS, push notifications. There's no limit to how many times you can send. I mean, don't want to send two or three a day, but I would say one a day is all set and game right now, and it's actually working brilliantly. I think as brands, we have to make use of this opportunity that's being provided to us and we should engage with our customers. And one of the smart things we try and use is we ask questions in our emails, like nothing complex, right? Hey, what a, when we send something like uh, skincare tips while you stay at home, we say, share your personal tips and have a chance to be featured, uh, have a chance, give it a chance. And people respond to those emails, which in turn, increases your email score. Yeah. So smart things like that, I think are working a lot and are actually working a little better because people are reading a lot more of the emails, reading a lot more of their SMS. Uh, so things like that have worked so far. Um, and we as a brand, even though we maintain consistency of manufacturing our products in India, we were lucky that we had stocked for four to seven, four to eight weeks of a lot of our winning SKUs. So even though India was shut down for three weeks, we were lucky enough to maintain stock levels and keep continuing to sell some of our products. And, you know, hopefully we can maintain our sales number over the next quarter. Yeah, interesting. So a lot of questions here to, to kind of delve a little deeper. Let's let's go with the latest one around stocking you know, four to eight weeks ahead of, of winning SKUs. What exactly does that mean? And how many SKUs do you have that are winning? And how do you work out that they're, if they're winning or not? Like they just, like they're 80-20 they're or they're in the 80-20? Yeah. So 
we have about a, as a global brand i think in india we have a lo- lot more skews than in the us because it's easy to just launch and scale something and if it doesn't work with low moqs since we own part of a factory to launch scale but if something doesn't work we you know shift it out of the circulation right so we have over 175 to 200 skews in india and about 70 skews in the us i think we are about 90% of our sales are generated by about 15% of our skews right and the rest is all filling inventory winning skew uh we look at it in two ways obviously volume of sales but also repeat purchases that's what qualifies as winning so i would say when we talk of volumes uh is it moving a minimum of 5000 units uh every two weeks is a winning skew and repeat purchases is if a customer is buying it at least two and a half to three times a year right you have to understand like we as marketers get confused with this idea that oh it needs to be a subscription model right i ship it every month but when it comes to really like if you really look at household habits and what do families do let's consider shampoos if you really look at the stats people buy shampoo three times a year two and a half times a year like you know if you ask your partner for example or your wife or your girlfriend doesn't matter once they know what they like they'll only buy it two or three times a year it's not that you go out buy a shampoo bottle every month very rare unless you're buying like really small 100 ml travel size bottles you know yeah. so for us as a brand that's one of the big eye openers too that we understood buying habits and buying scenarios what is considered great what is considered not great you know supplements are different right we also sell supplements in a few categories in india like biotin omega 3 and so on those are you know every month or every 60 days depending on the size of bottles people buy so that's what qualifies as winning skews and it's why i say it's super important depending on moqs that you have with your manufacturing facilities whether and also whether the manufacturing is local or offshore that you maintain a minimum of 4 to 8 weeks of inventory right or sometimes even more but let's say 4 to 8 weeks is ideal in this new world so we do that simply because uh we didn't know if something like the corona virus was going to happen but it takes about 45 days for us to get after we issue a purchase order to a factory from for the for our factories to make a container let's say of a shampoo get it to the port from india to the us custom cleared and into our warehouses be it amazon or our own 3pl warehouses right so we all want to make, yeah we we want to because you don't want to move inventory of heavy products where cost of transport from one country to another is so huge when if you bring it by air or if you bring it by ocean freight it's almost 115th the cost so there's no point for me to air freight one liter bottles of shampoo like just cost wise as a brand it just was going to kill you It'll take away all your profits so we maintain that we generally almost 98% of the time unless it's some kind of an emergency we always bring products by sea so that is one of the reasons that we maintain 4 to 8 weeks of inventory and also it'll you know things can go wrong whether it's a at your port or at your factory a ship sinks it gets held up for an additional 2 weeks at customs in india or in the us fda holds it for extra x ray scanning for another week so you don't want to keep cutting close right and especially the way algorithms work with amazon and so far and so on these days it really affects you if you go out of stock on these big platforms so we always try to maintain 4 to 8 weeks of inventory and another important reason right 
I'm not sure if most sellers on Amazon are aware of this because at least in the US, Amazon wants this new thing, which is they want to deliver everything same day or next day, right? Not two day prime, but same day or next day prime. So they want to spread your SKUs in warehouses all over the US, which are owned by Amazon, where they were they are able to deliver within a day or same day. So the more inventory of your winning SKUs that you can maintain in Amazon ecosystem, you'll actually see an uptick in your sales of at least 15 to 20 percent because you the algo se- starts featuring you on listings which are same day next day which actually is a psychology especially for health and beauty products oh i'm able to get it today or tomorrow okay i want to try this product you know you see what i mean you're winning that buy box compared to other brands who might not have enough inventory i'm not talking about listen amazon always sends if you send a container which is let's say only three weeks worth of your sales to Amazon sends it to all the big cities. That is a given, right? But you want to win over America or UK or Australia is the smaller tier two, tier three cities and smaller towns and villages around the country, like the countryside where, they, where people and consumers don't have options to go to a Walmart or a Walgreens and buy whatever they want. You know what I mean? So now they are the ones who are try, willing to try new brands online. They look for certain keywords on Amazon. Oh, I can get this product within a day or two. I want to try this other brand. You see what I mean? So it actually gives you, gives you this additional 10 to 15% edge where you're able to compete. And you'd be surprised how many people are going to buy a product, especially in the beauty space, if it's delivered to them quickly within the next day or two compared to, you know, oh, 15 days, you know, uh, they're like, I don't want to spend $20 and wait 15 days. But if it's next day or two and if it's on a, you know, a platform like Amazon who they trust, they, they'll they buy it. So those are some of the advantages to maintain you know, long-term inventory, obviously, you know, I really wish and hope that uh, another coronavirus doesn't happen, but, you know, it's important to maintain the, you know, sanctity of inventory management because things do go wrong, like I explained, whether it's, you know, your container being held at a port for customs clearance or FDA clearance always happens. We've seen this happen several times. So this just... These are things that we've failed and learned over time over the last three years by exporting things into the U.S. market, right? So uh, we just maintain four to eight weeks of inventory these days. Yeah, I know that makes sense. Um, You mentioned subscription. So I was going to ask you that, like I was thinking perhaps um, a product or some of the products that you have in your in your range, you would have subscription. You don't have subscription or you do? Do we do? We do both. Uh, in fact, I would say we don't force subscriptions on people. We truly believe we're not a brand which says, "Oh, you can only subscribe and you can only buy it as a subscription." Right? We, in fact, that's not even a. If you go to our checkouts, that's not even a default checkout option. Right? We, you can buy it one time, and if you're happy, next time you can come back and buy it as a subscription. Uh, so. And we have that enabled even on Amazon. And I think about about 10 to 15 percent of our customers take subscriptions and it shows value over time. And when you do subscriptions of health and beauty, it's easy to fall prey to this idea of, oh, I wanted to make it every 30 days because it's subscription revenue building. But that's not really true. You don't want to be in a situation or become a brand which is sending bottles every month and you build up this you walk into a person's house and you go, why do you have like five sets of the shampoos? Oh, you know, I added it on subscription. I forgot to cancel. You don't want to be that brand, right? So we made the conscious decision of uh, even in our subscriptions, being able to do things like giving long-term options, right? Like every 60 days, every 90 days, every 180 days and things like that. And you know, more importantly, easy options of, you know, if customers contact you by phone or email, I want to skip this coming month and send email reminders. We actually send, I think, about three email reminders before 
the next rebuild. The rebuild like the, yeah. the week before your subscription rebuild happens, we send them three reminders saying three days to go before your one day to go, your subscription is going to be filled. And the email has a, a link where they can go change the subscription, right? Skip a month, change the date, or, you know, things like that. Um, there are a couple of options, obviously. Uh, if you're on Shopify, uh, recharge is a good option. But I think a um, uh, couple of our friends uh, have launched uh, Upscribe.io, uh, which is a little more advanced and a little more customizable. You get your own domain. Uh, so shout out to Upscribe.io. Uh, and they do an incredible job of being, you know, not just for brand owners, but also uh, customer side where customers are able to do incredible things when you log into the member portal to you know skip a month ship it the same day sometimes you know you also don't want to wait another 30 days maybe you you your sister took your shampoo conditioner bottle now you want to get it the same day and you don't want to go through the customer support call and email log into the portal ship today you know things like that bill and ship today things so it has a lot of great features like that and great subscription analytics right in the back end. Most subscription apps don't build this for brand owners where they don't they don't tell you, you know, attrition rate and you know, rebuild rate of different SKUs, what's working, what's not. And so Scribe.io has done a great job. They're based out of LA and we are we are, you know, big proponents of the subscription business model, but do it in a smart way where it's not overwhelming to customers because most people most uh, you know it's easy to just keep sending bottles and piss off a customer now you have lost that customer for life right once you lose faith in a brand you're not you're going to tell your friends and family about it they so the compounding effect of doing bad things as a brand will affect you long term so being fair to the customer, issuing, you know, liberally, r refunds liberally, you know, changing, hey, customer's not happy with a certain skincare product, just send him another type of skincare or hair care product for free. You, you don't know the magnifying effects that it has long term where a customer says, oh, this is the brand which let me try a different skincare product because this particular other skincare product from the same brand didn't adjust to my type of skin there are so many types of skin so many different types of scalp and hair so we always do that for our customers and we see you know our brand loyalty growing exponentially because of these small things and it's not too much by the way it just costs you about two or three percent more in extra refunds or reshipping fees and it just makes incredible long-term you know, brand value propositions with your loyal VIP customers that we like to call who become brand ambassadors themselves will continue to educate and talk about your brand for you at no CPA costs. Yeah, really smart. So talk to me about uh, Amazon versus Shopify. So it sounds like you guys are, are quite strong on Amazon. Um, like. Do you, do you, do you, what are your thoughts on, on having a branded store versus using Amazon and all that side of things? You have to be everywhere, right? Um, our, we are not a Amazon dependent brand at all. In fact, most of our marketing efforts, when we buy ads on Facebook and social media or, you know, any other proponent goes to our own Shopify store, by the way. So we have an equal split between marketplaces and our own Shopify. So we are not a shop, uh, Amazon brand at all. In fact, more, majority of our sales happen on non-Amazon channels. In India, it's actually an incredible split because Amazon is not the number one player in India, right? There's Amazon, there's Flipkart, there's Snapdeal, there's Nika.com, and then we have a, we are in a few thousand brick and mortar stores in India already. So, we have a good, nice spread where your risk proposition as a brand is so much lesser. You're not dependent on one platform. Um, so that's imp very important to do. 
and i think most pe- i think people are scared to list on amazon because people brands are like we can't control the narrative or the story for us we actually saw our conversion rates on our own shopify landing pages go up after we listed on amazon simply because people trust you as a brand because you're also selling on a trustworthy brand like amazon both in india and in the us we actually saw conversions go up and you know what's happened over the years i think you know maybe 10 years ago we would go to google right like to do product research for the new brand or a new gadget we want to try what's happened now is people just open their amazon app shopping app and just type in the brand name and product name and see if it's available if there's enough reviews they're going to check it out they do product so there's actual case studies and data to show that amazon's actually eclipsed uh google when it comes to uh, shopping discovery for new brands and products people just discover new products and research new products on amazon now so it's super important to be actually present on amazon uh don't sleep on walmart.com in the us uh it makes up about 6 to 8% of our sales right now a lot less competition than amazon so get on there <laughs> interesting okay so when it comes to i guess what's working now you talked a lot about um email and sms and not being afraid to perhaps you know send one email a day or one email every few days um one thing that i think people get hung up on with that is is perhaps they come over that barrier of not being afraid to email people which we've all gone through i'm sure you went through it in the early days you don't want to annoy people you don't want to be perceived like you're spamming people and you just don't email right um once you get over that like how do you know what to send like every day like are you guys doing like content or like like yeah, giveaways so it needs to be a really good mix let me be honest like it can be a coupon code and a product feature or a new release every week every day or every email or every week right so uh what's working during the covid-19 strategy that we have come up with like stay at home skin care tips stay at home health care tips uh you know features on an ingredient you know where you're not even selling any product you're just giving them content to consume right be it a video through email to a youtube link an article or you know tell them about uh, you know yoga essential oils you know meditation just send them content like you would send the communication style needs to be very family friendly kind of like how would you email like a semi formal friend you know like tips on how to reduce stress you know what how can you do meditation yoga how to stay fit and, you know that's what's working for us right? and obviously we're not sending a promotional email every day buy one get one free Man, i have no so- idea that's what yeah. that's what i had to ask just make sure yeah. yeah it has to be like a nice mix and that builds uh oh that was a great tip from by this brand let me go check out there in the footer we'll have a link to our shopify store and people go you know click on it and buy whatever they want but you know you're providing value to people and like just think differently like everyone's trying to send an email about covid-19 uh, how it's affecting the brand and you know you can do one email of that you can't repeat that whole cycle again and again so you'll have to think out of the box you know uh send about uh, you know i uh, like i said it's really important to ask hey we want to share with the you know for us we think do things like hey we want to share within the wow community of customers uh you know the giveaway campaign was great and we say things like you know hey uh best skin care tip wins or like share your homemade skin care tips and the best one will win you know free month supply of wow product share it respond and let us know what is your 
you know, secret, you know, made at home skincare or, or healthcare tip, you know, uh, and go out of the box and say, you know, what is your favorite homemade dish? Share it with us. Even though we're a skincare brand, you know, people want to know, like, you know, what can you make at home? And, you know, what are the homemade secret recipes which have stayed in your family and you want to share it to the world? And once you open your platform to your customers, people are, especially during these times, people want to engage with you. They're looking for different ways to communicate with friends and family and to the outside world. And because, like, most people are stuck at home. They're not seeing their co colleagues or coworkers or friends and family. So uh, I think you have to differentiate yourself and, you know, spread your wings and be innovative. And you'd be surprised why, how things work these days. Yeah, that's really interesting. So sending pure content emails and emails every day, mainly content, maybe a promo, maybe a giveaway, just providing as much value, you've seen a massive increase in sales. Yep. Now, when I say massive, probably 20, 30% spike, which adds on, right? Because people are looking at your emails, they'll look, they have read an email. Um, like, oh, yeah. all this stuff. And then they see your ad on Facebook. Oh, I, I like the email they sent last week. And I see that ad on Facebook, I'm going to buy now. So it adds, you're putting yourself in front of potential customers in a very different way than traditional brands, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what's working these days. Yeah, love it, man. That's awesome. Okay, well, look, we have to work towards wrapping up. I'm super mindful of your time um, and it's getting late for you. Uh, so thanks for staying up, brother. So um, just kind of couple last questions. One, uh, like any questions that I didn't ask you that you would have liked me to ask, like anything you want else that I've missed to kind of you want to share with the community on what they should be thinking about on when it comes to COVID, if you have an e-commerce store that perhaps you, you, it's not doing that well, you're not sure what to do. And then after that, just, yeah, where's the best place people can find out more about yourself and your work? I think one of the things that uh, we're actually trying to engage right now is work on a mobile app for our Shopify store. I think uh, uh, I've been dropping a lot of names, but <laughs> uh, Tapcart is a great app. It'll take your Shopify store and help you put up a mobile app really quickly. Um, so definitely use that. Uh, you can create a mobile app like just drag and drop kind of a setup, right? And now what you can do is buy traffic and for a different op optimization scheme, right, on Facebook or Google where you will buy instead of conversions or leads, for, but you can target it for app installs. Mm -hmm. So you're now competing in an e-commerce app install space which is has less competition on the auction compared to conversion, which the rest of the world is doing, right? So that is working. Uh, that's something that we're focusing on right now. Um, and once you get someone to install your app, imagine, I mean, don't over abuse it, but unlike deliverability and so on and so forth, you can send mobile notifications whenever you want, free of cost. You see what I mean? So. You now, again, have another avenue where you can communicate with your customers where they're bound to see your notification at any point of time. And remember, these notifications just doesn't need to be about sales. It can be, we are featuring a live Facebook or YouTube live with your favorite in-house cosmetologist or a hairstylist with hair care tips, log on now. You'll get a lot more action with your customers because they're looking at it. The notification pops up on their phone and they can log in live and participate on that live. Or, you know, one, you, you can send notification one hour to go for this giveaway to end, one hour to go for the sale to end. You're not depending on Clavio or you're not competing in the same space of hundreds of emails who are emailing or SMSing people and you're cluttered. Now you're separating and you're thinking ahead of the game, right? You're you're in the mobile apps notification space and you're able to control that narrative. No one's, you don't have to answer to Gmail or Hotmail or your SMS provider about 
what kind of notifications or the content you're sending on notifications. So you're, you know, staying out of the curve. I think it's important to be multi-channeled. So I would also say one of the other important things is, you know, don't don't be just Shopify dependent or Amazon dependent. Sell at multiple places. You'd be surprised. Like we sell on eBay. We sell on. Uh, we're trying to get on Target.com. We're trying to get on. Uh, we are on Groupon, which has two or three percent of our overall revenue. You know, all these additional marketplaces where there's less competition definitely get on, because. There's obviously a loyal set of customer which only shop on certain marketplaces and it adds additional value to you. So uh, what was your final question? Uh, Where's the best place people can find out more about yourself and your work? I'm not too active in social media. Uh, you, can, you guys can probably follow me on uh, LinkedIn, I would say. I don't post much. Uh, I mean... This is probably one of the few places they can probably find an interview of me. So you founder is probably uh, lucky to feature that. Otherwise, I do, you know, podcasts and so on with uh, friends and, you know, who are in the industry who request me to come on, things like this. Uh, I would love to, you know, participate and share more knowledge. But uh, I don't go to too many, you know, conferences, especially on the sales and marketing side. We differentiate ourselves as a brand. We actually go to a lot of ingredient conferences uh, we go to uh, as comp as a brand we go to conferences which are about manufacturing and packaging of beauty products you know crazy thing fragrances somewhere in europe you know some small town in france and things like that so we like to go to those things so uh, i think Wow, uh, wow uh, can be followed on wow skin science instagram and facebook and wow skin science india for india uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, uh, Snapchat, and TikTok too. TikTok's working really well. Uh, it, uh, sorry, I missed out. TikTok's re working really, really well for us in a market like India, especially. So definitely get on there. Really cheap CPMs. And obviously, you have to work with TikTok influencers and let them create content and promote the content created by content creators. And that's what's working. So it's not typical create an ad, edit it the way you want and push it. So you have to be different with TikTok. So that's been good. Uh, that's it for me. I don't know. Uh, I'm obviously, if some, if some, I think I'm on your network. I'm on, uh, I'm on uh, Facebook of founders. So that's one place people can find me, I guess. And, you know, if someone tags me on the Facebook group of founders and asks me specific questions, I'm more than happy to answer. And I look forward to getting to know people in the founder network and, uh, you know, exchange ideas and uh, help uh, each other grow. Amazing. Well, look, thank you so much for your time, Ash. You were very, very giving tons, like a page of awesome notes. Um, I'm going to give this to my partner that runs an e-commerce store. She's got a lot of work ahead of her now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Request her to hit me up, you know, on Facebook and Greta can, you know, by, uh, introduce us by email too. I absolutely more than happy to answer any questions within the founder network and more than happy to, you know, go through the process. Absolutely. Amazing. Well, look, thank you so much for your time, man. It was an absolute pleasure. The founder mission is to help you create an ass-kicking business and help you learn straight from the mouths of world-class founders. Get your free printed edition of Founder Magazine featuring Sir Richard Branson. Just cover shipping and handling at founder.com forward slash Branson.